trumpeter, singer, composer, Hugh Masekela, an emblem of his revolutionary age. Mentored by radical anti-apartheid priest, later Archbishop Trevor Huddleston, it was Father Huddleston who started him off on his musical journey. Not only helping him to acquire his first trumpet, but later securing a gift of a second from the great jazz original Louis Armstrong. Masekela left the brutal apartheid of his birthplace and found success in America and here in Europe. But his music always reflected his African roots and during his years in exile became one of the inspirational sounds of the struggle for justice and change. His songs protested about apartheid and slavery, the government, everyday hardships and oppression. Keeping alive the spirit of survival and liberation through his music, Bring Him Back Home became the anthem of the campaign to free Nelson Mandela and defeat apartheid. You were an early starter. You were playing the piano by the age of five. What got you to the trumpet? Um, I saw a film called Young Men with a Horn. It's a story of Bix Beiderbeck. And in it, uh, uh, Kirk Douglas played the part. And I went with a friend of mine. He had told me about the movie, and he said, we've got to go and see this. And when we came back, we realized that we had to be trumpet players. But it's one thing to see a good movie. It's another to find yourself with a trumpet. Huddleston knew my parents, Trevor Huddleston, uh, Bishop Huddleston. He knew everybody's parents and every, you know, was, And he said, what do you really want to do with your life, creature? He called everybody creature. You know, and I said, Father, if I can get a trumpet, I won't bother anybody anymore. He said, are you sure, creature? I said, yeah. And he said, okay, this is my last 15 pounds, because you know, us monks are poor. <laughs> uh, we, you know, we have chastity, poverty, and obedience, so we're not paid. I'll write you a note. So I wrote a note. Dear Bob, please give this boy a trumpet. I only have 15 pounds. And he had a very strong accent, Bob. He says, further must be crazy. 15 pound? <laughs> and after about a month, I was playing songs from the movie. You know, I was born in a coal mining town. And the miners on the weekends used to come and uh, they used to tell us the stories. There's a train that comes from Malawi and Namibia. This train carries young and old African men 16 hours or more a day for almost no pay. I mean, I tell you, John, I never slept in my bed as a child because my mother was a social worker. My father was a health inspector. They were community workers. And they always brought stray kids. And they stay with us sometimes for a month, sometimes for a week. But we had to sleep on the floor. And they'd give them our clothes, some of our clothes. So I asked my parents one day, I said, what's going on? You know, I asked my mother, I said, people come here and they leave and you're giving them. She said, well, you'll always have a home. You'll always have clothes. And you always have, have something to eat. But these children have nowhere to go. So I never sat down and I said, I'm writing so way to blues now. I said to somebody, you got to hear the song. And I just played just, and, it, and it'd be finished. And I'd say, uh, just come out of it. Yeah, and they'd say like, when did you write it? I said, I didn't write it. It just came in. Bring back Nelson Mandela. Bring him back home to Soweto. Is that what happened with Bring Him Back Home? That the, Same thing. Which became absolutely Same the thing. song same thing, Nelson Mandela About wrote me a letter on my 46th birthday. And uh, he said, um, dear Hugh, uh, we're so happy. Uh, I'm so uh, happy and inspired by the work you are doing there, the studio. And, and he knew everything about me and be strong and keep doing it. And I was like, damn, this guy is in prison for 20 years and he's wishing me luck and I'm fine out here. And I went to the piano again and I started singing. My wife came out from the backyard and said, I don't know that song, when did you write it? I said, Nelson just sent it. If we come to the present day, you've got a real worry that the kind of tribal and other origins that fueled your music, together with your politics, 
that in, in some ways those influences are beginning to die away. I think that through colonialism and, and, and uh, conquest and the misinterpretation of religion, the misinterpretation of uh, uh, education, urbanization, and especially religion, have gotten Africans to the point where uh, today uh, most Africans just feel that their heritage is heathen and pagan and backward and barbaric and primitive and savage. And, uh, and we're a society that doesn't uh, uh, sell anything, really, you know. We, we but, but buy, that, that, we're a consumer society internationally. So do you think, in fact, that kind of symbolizes the loss of confidence and belief in roots and origins? Not, not only that, you know, most African homes today, uh, especially in the urban uh, areas, most African children can't even speak the mother tongues anymore. So which, which force violated it, slavery or missionaries? After all, a missionary, I, I think, a I missionary th gave you your trumpet. I think, I think yeah, but you know, uh, uh, um, Trevor Harrison wasn't a missionary. Trevor Harrison was what every human being should be. And if every human being was like Trevor Harrison, I'd be a, a, a priest today. <laughs> Hugh Masekela, thank you very much for talking. Thank you. Thank you, John. Wonderful to meet you. I love your tie, by the way. Love yours, too. <laughs>